Get that energy right. Get that energy right. Hey, just want to say, man, to everybody, we launched our first episode. Thank y'all so much. It's a big deal to me. All 4,500, 5,000, whoever watched on YouTube, we appreciate y'all, right? We grateful for it. We coming for the championship. Energy right, mind right, disposition right, perspective right, perception right. I'm just letting you know, man. Better pick it up. But I appreciate y'all clapping for me, bro. I be needing that. I be wanting to clap sometimes, but I had to hit my leg. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had to, when I hit that leg, you already know. That's the clap, T. That's the clap. That's the clap. That's it. Hey, I hit that leg. It's on. You know what I'm saying? But we appreciate y'all, man. Thank you, Johnson. Oh, going for the championship that ain't coming close. This might require taking notes, homie. Listen close. Serendipity when you know you the one who chose. We going past the end zone, crushing every goal. I feel it in my enzymes and my chromosomes. If you ain't come outside to go hard, then go back home. I'm in my zone. If it ain't great, it's a better love alone. It's for the world. Put what we speaking on on speakerphone. Yeah, wills. Let them know what we be on. Serendipity, man. Tune in. What's going on, good people? Welcome to Serendipity. I'm Inky Johnson with my brother. I'm Oak. What's happening, good people? How you feeling, Wazo? Uh, like I said, man, I'm I'm uh I'm invigorated. I'm excited. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like For sure. Ready to uh just tackle, just tackle what's next. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, um this year, man, I um uh, I said, man, I'm going for the chip. You know what I'm saying? I'm going for the championship. I ain't trying to be eliminated in game one. I ain't trying to be knocked out of the playoff. I'm trying to win the chip. Oh, that's right. So, um, you know, I feel, I feel energized, man. I feel, I feel like I could run the race. You know what I'm saying? It's one thing to want to do it. It's another thing to feel like you're capable of doing it. You know, and I feel like I'm capable of doing it at different spaces in my life, I haven't always felt as if I was capable, mm -hmm. but I embraced that level, right? But now I feel like I'm capable of winning it. You understand? What, what uh, let me ask you this question. What is it that, what is it that, that, that has happened or what is it that's kind of transpired with you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, over the past few years to where I can I can feel it. I can see it. You're in a different space, yeah. place. I would say uh, more than anything, man, just um, learning. You know, from different experiences, from different people, from different circumstances. I feel like you can only go as high as you grow, mm -hmm. right? And even when I wasn't at the level to where I felt I was capable of winning a championship, and of course we using that, but I embraced where I was, right? It wasn't like I was in fantasy land. I knew what I needed to do, you know? I knew what I needed to try to accomplish in order to get to a certain space and place. But I would say learning, man, and also uh, taking care of my temple, man. You know, that's something that's very important to me, man. Working out, trying to eat right, having clarity of thought, because what we put in our body affects the way we think, yeah. right? And so putting the right things in my body so I could think with clarity. And um, man, and then I feel like naturally, you know, I'm wired to attack. You know, and when I say attack, I ain't talking about people. I'm talking about goals, dreams, and aspirations. So I would say learning, taking care of my temple, man, and just wired to attack, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I would say this, man. It, look, it looks good on you. Uh, Appreciate you, doctor. The the clarity and and the energy that uh, that you have, you know, and it's, it's only going to manifest great things for you, young Thundercat. For real. I appreciate you, my dog. All right, man, let's get into this quote card from D Sugar Boo and Company. Maybe the journey isn't so much about becoming anything. Maybe it's about unbecoming everything that isn't you so you can be who you were meant to be in the first place. I'm going to run it back. Maybe the journey isn't so much about becoming anything. Maybe it's about unbecoming everything that isn't you so you can be who you were meant to be in the first place. Man, that's... Talk to us. That's a, that's a lot. That's a lot. Because 
you know, where my mind goes to first is the recalibration of everything that you've been taught. Even from, oh and it's, the hardest part is some of the things you've been taught from your family. Yes, sir. Right, the people that you love and who mean and, and, and have the best intentions for you. Mm-hmm. Yet they still don't, they still may not know what God's intention is for you. Mm. They are functioning off of what society has told them the intention is. Yes, sir. Right? So it, it's, it's like... um. Like for me, and I tell people all the time, I grew up in a place where I was the I was the oldest son, oldest grandson on uh, one side of my family, and I received a lot of privileges. Mm. And in receiving those privileges, sometimes I got caught up in 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 what those privileges brought me. Mm. Right, the attention, yeah. Um, the basically kind of excusing some of my faults. Mm. Talk about it, and and what that did was it set me back mm. because in some places I wasn't held accountable when I should have been. Yes, yeah. I appreciate the balance. In other places, I was held accountable. So, um, I'm. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm where I should be mm-hmm. because of that, but I'm definitely not where I could have been mm. in life. Yes, sir. So, you know, I appreciate the, I appreciate the privilege of of what, uh, as, the, as it says, in unbecoming, I, I've had to spend a lot of my adult life unbecoming Mm. Some things. What I mean by that is I had to un- unbecome the thought that just because it's me, right on. I was supposed to get some things. Mm. I was supposed to just receive the privileges, mm. right? And so what that does is it makes you, quote, unquote, spoiled. Mm. Like, in, in true transparency, I was a spoiled child. Mm. So I had to unbecome being sport hmm. and that level of work, right? Yeah. And so when I have, and, and we're looking at uh, my my young nephews and 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 whatnot, it's it's a difficult proposition. I'm just being real with you, man. Let me right. just have a real conversation with you. Talk about it's it. a difficult com- it's a difficult proposition because I don't want to create waves with my family. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, these young Thundercats are their pride and joy. Right. But I know what the end result and what the di- the difficulty that they're going to have to in, uh, endure mm. when they're 20, 25, 30, 35, trying mm. to be somebody's husband, <laughs> trying to be somebody's father. Right? Because they've always been the apple of the eye of their mother mm. or their aunties. And of course, you know, the aunties and mothers and them thinking, you know, this my baby, right? Wonderful, cool, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. But what about when he get 30? Mm. He's gonna have to endure some things on his own that he has not been equipped to do, mm. to endure, right? Coach Harris back at Young Middle School always said, you know, it's all cute when he's a little monkey, but when he grow up to be a gorilla. Gorilla. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I see that a lot of times, and I I try to mitigate it very subtly without disturbing the peace of my family. Yes, sir. And so, you know, and then you have the the thing of, well, we did it for you. Why we can't do it for them? Mm. You, You got all of this. Well, but what y'all don't know, the backstory of it is at two or three o'clock in the morning when you up crying and and trying to figure life out because you've been granted some things and you've been granted some privileges that then leave you in a very healthy space. So it's very, you know, it just, like I always say, man, I try to raise young boys 
who are six, seven, eight, nine, and ten to be somebody's granddad. Yes, sir. Not necessarily somebody's dad. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That you have that that <laughs> level of wisdom, and if you can get it when you're twenty, when you're twenty five, uh, as opposed to you having to have life endure, you have to endure life to get that level of wisdom. So the unbecoming, I want to, I want that un- unbecoming to happen as soon as possible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, um, I think unbecoming is the greatest form of growth mm-hmm. because I feel like you're always unbecoming. I feel like as a matter of fact, to a certain extent, you're doing more unbecoming than becoming along the journey of development, along the journey of accomplishment, right? You're always unbecoming, right? There's a quote I thought about, and I had to pull it up, man, as you were speaking. I'm like, bro, this is, this is it. It says, tough times create strong men and women. Strong men and women create easy times. Easy times create weak men and weak women. Weak men and women create tough times. You have to raise warriors, right? And oftentimes, when we speak to unbecoming, I can't tell you how many times I've encountered hold, things. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you, 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 you saying that like you up on stage doing the speech. We yeah, I'm reading it, bro. You got to you say that a little slower. So, so you so, already so, talking so, about I talk it. fast. I do talk <laughs> fast. Say that a little slower. Say tough times create strong men and women. Strong men and women create easy times. Easy times create weak men and weak women. Weak men and weak women create tough times. You have to raise warriors. Hold on. You so, have to raise warriors. So I liken it to tough times. Grandparents grew up in tough times. Mm-hmm. Right? And they created our parents. And our parents created us to where, in actuality, we had easy times. Hmm. And if we're not careful and and think about the whole cycle here and yeah. try to get back in front of it, then we're going to create weak kids. Right. And I think that's where we are right now. Yeah. We're in the cycle of creating weak kids. Hmm. So it won't be until the next 50 years because from the weak times, hard times are going to be created. Definitely. So our kids, kids may, may, and I say may, mm. um, be able to become strong. Yeah. And then, but the, the catch is, if it's so, it's so cyclical. Yeah, it's like, and so we got to have the foresight to say, yes, you got easy times, but you also got to manufacture hard times for your kids. Because mm-hmm. it's easier, it's better, it's more healthy if I manufacture the hard times rather than life presents the hard times. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to make sure that, because oftentimes when we grow up and we get into a different space and you hear the terms like, every generation should have it better or every generation should improve. And when you get in certain positions, you always hear the thought process of, I want to give my kids what I never had. When in all actuality and reality, you should be instilling certain things within your children so they can become something different, right? It's not so much about the materialistic and the superficial. That come and go, that blow like the wind. But what's inside of them, the roots, need to be strong so when they encounter certain situations, they know how to navigate, they know how to think, they know how to process it to become or get to the places that they need to get to. But oftentimes we look at it in terms of we want to give them a life, we want to give them things so much, and there's nothing wrong. The intention is correct, Yeah. right? You want your children to have a little bit better, you want them to have some things that you didn't have. Ain't nothing wrong with that. The intention is good. But you got to create, You like I said, you got to raise a warrior. Life ain't sparing nobody. Mm-hmm. You understand? Life gonna hit everybody in the mouth. And, and I think um, the way in which that for us to, for us to, any of us to raise warriors is first you got to break the paradigm and get out the paradigm. 
And what I mean by the paradigm of when we say better, what do we mean? Mm. What does what what does it mean to have a better life than I had? Mm. Right? Yeah. In fact, I can venture to say I I don't even have the capability of providing a better life for my kids than the one I had. Mm. Because if it was rough, tough, dangerous, mm-hmm. or if it was I got everything that I wanted, mm-hmm. right? It doesn't matter that was the best life that I could have, and I can't provide anything better than that. Mm. So going back to what you're saying, it's not about providing a better life. It's providing for young people a way in which you see the world, the way in which you interact with the world that is conducive to who you are on the inside. Right. Yeah. So you're not chasing ghosts Mm. of what's better. What you're doing is, what you want to give and empower young people with is for them to understand for themselves, what is it that I want? Mm. What is it that makes me happy? Mm. What is it that I can do that I can contribute to the world, right? What is it that feeds me? Not what society is saying to us is better. Yeah. So I want to be real, I guess, meticulous about when we say, I want my kids to have a better life than I did. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. (laughs) I don't want you to have no better life than me. I want you to be able to process better than me. Mm. I want you to be able to heal from hurt better than me. You know what I'm saying? I want you to be able to evolve emotionally better than me. Right. Because when we say better, that connotates, as you were saying, that connotates material things. Yeah. Better better is usually external. Right. Based. Right. At the foundation. Right. Yeah. Shifting the paradigm to better being internally. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm picking it up. I got it. I um, I want to go into self-discipline. Oh, self-discipline is giving everything you have and knowing what to hold back. Mm. No contradiction. Said so many will consider it a contradiction. Self-discipline is giving everything you got and knowing what to hold back. Many will consider it a contradiction. No contradiction, only balance. Some things we resist mm-hmm. and some things we pursue. Mm-hmm. Self-discipline is giving everything you have and knowing what to hold back. No contradiction, only balance. Knowing what to resist and knowing what to pursue. Well, on 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 a scale of one to ten, I probably get about six point two. So I get a six two. I got an L. Yeah. Because I know what to give. Mm-hmm. But when my passion without reflection mm-hmm. gets involved, I don't know what to hold back. Mm. Yeah. It's sort of like when we're talking to somebody come and step on your shoe. You you just got them new J's, whatever, and they step on your shoe. And then they say, and you say, hey, bro, what's up, man? Yeah. And he looked back at you. What you talking about? Mm. About it, man. About caring about your shoes? Yeah. Do you have the self-discipline to hold back? Mm. Right? Mm. Or for me, it's like, I see a young Thundercat cursing out his grandmama. Yeah. I ain't got the self-discipline to hold back. You you got to get these act right, bro. <laughs> Tighten up. Tighten up. Yeah, that may, that has cost me a, a great portion of my life. Mm. I mean, you know, my livelihood. Mm. So that's why I say, man, I, I ain't got, Gip ain't got it, man. I ain't yeah. got it. It's tough, man. Like, even when I was reading, I'm like, self-discipline, giving everything you got and knowing when to hold back. Most would look at that as a contradiction on the path to self-discipline. But it says no contradiction, only balance. Mm -hmm. Knowing what to resist, knowing what to pursue. And it's like, when you look at discipline and you finna chase something or pursue something, you're like, all right, I'm gonna be disciplined. This is my process. This is my framework. But then it's like, knowing what to hold back knowing when to hold back, 
You don't think about that portion of it. Yeah. Knowing what to chase, what not to chase. You don't think about that portion of it. Knowing when to say no to certain opportunities because by you saying no, now you can study and prep a little bit more to make you a better presenter or to make you a better teacher, better at what you do. You don't think about that portion of it. Oftentimes when you think about self-discipline and pursuing, you don't think about what do I need to resist in order to make this happen. And resisting is also a part of self-discipline. Right. That's, you that's don't think other, about that portion. Yeah, that's the other aspect of it. Because balance, because um, the, the objective is balance. Right. The universe is balance. Mm. You run, your body gets hot, you do what? Sweat. Right. Right? You sweat because that's the universe uh, offering up the uh, the law of reciprocity. Right? The law of homostasis, I mean, homostasis. So, we're, we're always pressing to and seeing one side. But again, I take it back to, and we're not, we got to get to a place where we teach that from the start. Yes, sir. You teaching it, when I mean from the start, like you teaching a four-year-old. Like for me, I don't really, I, all four-year-olds should know their ABCs. Mm. Yeah. You said all of them shouldn't or should? should? All should. of them should. Gotcha. Because it's based on to me, it's based on their level of maturity. Hmm. Got Because you can have so people, some some young folks who are so smart that they're dumb. Hmm. <laughs> but the only reason we're saying dumb is because you don't have the maturity to handle or the capacity to handle the information, the knowledge that you're getting. Hmm. So it's still off balance. Yeah, I got you. Right? So a lot of times what I've seen with young people, like you can have some prodigies and they're very great in this area and very deficient in that area. Yeah. So we have an off balance or an imbalance. And the issue is imbalance. That's what I hear when you're making that statement. Like the, the process is to be balanced. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um. I want to hear your thoughts on this. Um, it says, the strategy is only as good as your ability to articulate it. Clarity becomes very important. In addition, clarity is essential to leadership. Your strategy is only as good as your ability to articulate it. Clarity becomes very important, right? It made me think of this. Oh, I was on a plane to California and I was watching the movie Lone Survivor and I've seen it a number of times, man. And they going on this mission, going out to do something. They ready, they suited and booted, they excited. You know, they ready. Yeah. They trained for this, you know what I'm saying? And um, they get to a point along the mission that something doesn't go the way that they thought it was gonna go. They had an interruption, right? While they laying low on the opposition, something happens, right? Interruption happens. When the interruption happens, the guys respond. The lone survivors, the guys that's in the service, they respond. But when they respond, they didn't expect that level of opposition, right, within their strategy. And so they was like, man, what do we do? Do we kill these cats? Do we let these cats go? And they run down and they're going to tell the opposition what we doing? We stalking them. They're going to be on us in a minute. They're going back and forth within the camp. And one of the dudes say, hey, man, listen up. I know what protocols say. I know what the books say, all of this. But I care about you. I care about you. I care about you. And I don't want to see a video with your head hanging from something that didn't happen. So I know what the protocols say, but they shouldn't dictate how we do our job. This is what we train to do. This is what we work to do. They shouldn't dictate how we do our job. The captain was like, all right, man, I got it. Cool. We're going to let these cats go. We're going to go make the call. We're going to go home. When they let them go to go make the call, to go home, little man ran down toward the opposition. Opposition was on them. Cats end up losing their life except one dude. That's why it's called Lone Survivor. Marcus Luttrell, respect. My brother, I done been on his podcast before. Okay. Much respect, right? And I was like, man, they didn't expect that to happen. And it talks about clarity, right? And how important it is. 
I sent it to Mayo, and I was like, bro, pick this up. I think oftentimes, oh, when we don't expect things to happen or when we go out and we try to accomplish things, one of the things that we very rarely think about is clarity Mm -hmm. in messaging and how important that is. You being an educator, I know it's extremely important when you step up the four cats and explain with me as a communicator. I remember I used to step on the stage and be like, all right, cool, let's roll, let's get into it, whatever, whatever. Now I think about if I was in the crowd, what would I want somebody to do at the beginning of a presentation? What would I want to know? I would want clarity. I would want to know, man, where this cat about to take me? Warren Buffett said it. If I had somebody that know how to communicate and they up for the job and there's somebody else that's qualified for the job, the person that knows how to communicate, I would probably pay them 100 grand more to do the job. That's how important communication is and clarity. So um, when you think the clarity in communication, how important is that? It, it's, I think about clarity. Uh, I always just say put language to it. Put language to it. Yes, sir. Because uh, we have feelings, we have emotions, we have thoughts. Uh, yet, if we can't speak the same language, um, we're, then we're going to always have a problem, right? Yes, sir. Have, Outside of when, you know, y'all were young Thundercats, whatever. Have we ever gotten in an argument? Nope. Have we ever gotten in a disagreement? Nope. Not real. We joke right. about stuff, but no, nah, not nothing real. No. Why? Communication, clarity. Talk about it. Because we 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 fight for the language. Mm. See, communication is animals communicate. Yes, sir. Right? So when people say communication is important, I'm not disagreeing with you. What I'm saying is that's not the extent of it. Mm-hmm. Right? You communicate without, you can communicate, I can be like, yeah. and you know what that means. Yeah. Or you have a general synopsis of what that means. Right. But when we put language to it, that's what makes it clarity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Communication is the exchange of information between two people. Right. Clarity comes when we put language to it. Yeah. So to me, clarity is the most important thing. So then if clarity is the most important thing, then we got to put language to a thing. Mm-hmm. So that we can we can accomplish the goal, right? Right. So for me, it's um in 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 education, lesson plans. Lesson plans is the communication between a teacher and their coach or their administrator of what they are about to do and teach to their Mm -hmm. students. That's the communication piece. The language piece is what the teacher imparts and uses with their students. And that language is particular to every teacher. Yeah. All teachers communicate. But all teachers also have their own particular language. Right. You and your wife communicate, but y'all have a particular language in which y'all communicate. Mm -hmm. That's where the clarity comes in. Yes, sir. Right? So you and I have a particular language that we use. We're going to chop it up. We're going to pitch and catch. Yeah. Right? So when you say pitch and catch, I, I hear pitch and catch. You say, or I say, I'm picking up what you're putting down. That's our clarity. Mm-hmm. You say that to somebody else over there, they're like, what you talking about, bro? <laughs> I ain't got no glove. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. it's more important to, most important to have clarity, which means it's most important to put language to your communication. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Inky, how you feeling? Yeah. Right? As opposed to, Inky, how you doing? Right. So if I say, how you doing? You may say, I'm doing all right. I'm good. I'm straight. Yeah. I say, Inky, how you feeling? Now you got to give me some language to your emotions. Right. And once you do that, that builds the connection. It builds the trust. Now we can go into war together. Mm-hmm. We can have the utmost communication and go into war and neither one of us come out. Yeah. 
But if we go into war with language and clarity, yes, sir. we're going to be able to come out of that thing. Yes, sir. Yeah. No, I'm picking it up. Yeah. That's not picking it up. Put language to it. Like, put language to it. For real. Put language to your feelings. Put language to your thoughts. Especially men. Put language to your situation and circumstances. Put language to it. Find the language and the specific language. Like, fight for the language. Yeah. So that that builds, then strengthens the relationship. So now down the road, you're good to go. Especially men. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know. You know, women too, but especially men. Because oftentimes with men, we don't we don't express ourselves or we don't mm-hmm. put language to our emotions. Right. You know, in terms of how we feel, it's always just a generalization. Yeah. You know. Because yeah. I can say, you know, it really, it, it, you know, it, it, it kind of chaps the, my backside when, you know, when you don't say, hey, baby, I appreciate you. Mm. Or if you don't say, um, you know, if you don't do whatever, whatever, and you letting someone know how it really makes you feel. Yeah. We'll just say it's all good. And then we, as men, what we do, for the most part, we'll just chop it up as collateral damage, you know, I'll be all right. Yeah. I'll be all right. But you ain't got so many I'll be all right in you. Before and you ain't all right when you say you all right. Right. You ain't all right. And then that's the sign. And, and when it comes out, it comes out ugly. Like it's so many cats incarcerated because of I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. And then the next cat that does something or a situation happens and they blow up because it was just sitting inside of them. It's over. It's over. And you got to pay for that consequence right there. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, um, you know, you do your best to teach it, but it's like some things you got to experience, right? Like in the moment, you could teach and you could say, and then when somebody experiences something, like people respond totally different. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You could say, hey man, do this when you encounter that. And when that situation come up, they forget everything you told them. But when you experience it and then you do it, it's a totally different experience in terms of how you respond and how you handle the situation. You're, you're going down a whole nother road. You know what I'm saying? Right I'm telling you. Because what you just said just brought me to the concept of um, uh, a person doesn't, again, I don't know if I said this or not, but it's not about what you say. It's not about what you do. It's what you teach. Right. So if I'm trying to relay a concept to you, mm-hmm. right? I can say it. I can even do it. Right. But it's not going to resonate until I teach it. And what teaching is, when you see me in that situation, and how do I respond? Mm-hmm. That's what's going to resonate to you. So it's teaching. When you say teaching, it's teaching ultimately doing it or just teaching Teaching, teaching is you being your you being your authentic self and someone else witnessing it. Right. Because see, I can teach you, um, and that's not necessarily what I believe. It just this is what I've been mandated to do to teach you this. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I can say it. Yeah. I've been mandated to do this, but I don't believe it. Mm-hmm. When the rubber hits the road, what I believe is what I'm going to do. Right. And you getting a chance to see it is teaching. Gotcha. So that's how you frame it. So it's more so the example is you teaching it by the example you set from what you do in the moment. Right. Lil Ink, right. I don't care how, you can talk to him till you blue in the face. Mm-hmm. You can show him till you blue in the face. Yeah. Right? But you actually teach, what's going to resonate with him, think about your pops. Yeah. What resonates with you is what you saw him do. Right. Every time. What you saw him do on a day-to-day basis or any time you were around him, then that's that was him teaching. Mm-hmm. Whether it, and then the catch is you want to be now, since we we understand that, then every time you want to be intentional mm-hmm. about what you're doing. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like the quote that says you don't rise to the occasion, you revert back to your training. 
Meaning mm -hmm. in moments of change, uncertainty, opposition, adversity, you always gonna revert back to who you are. Yeah. Regardless of what you say, regardless yeah. of how cute it may be, you always revert right. back to your core yeah. and who you are. Be because, meaning, that that's it right there. In a controlled situation, I may do this. Oh, no question. In a controlled situation, I may say this. Mm -hmm. Yet, my teaching is, when life hits, how I respond. Yeah. And someone getting a chance to witness that. Definitely. Now you talk, Now you are teaching. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's um, it's a lot easier said than done, right? <laughs> that's what <laughs> that's it. Right. But I want to know this, though. Why does, why does crises destroy some marriages, some organizations, some teams, some families, and others, it doesn't. Now, I know that's a broad statement because we're not speaking to the specifics, but if you were to build a framework in terms of why some people are destroyed by crises and why other people aren't, it's, how would you attack it's, it? It's, it's built on your foundation. So you always got to make sure you point the concrete right. Right? You pour the concrete right, and then you're going you're gonna to be able to withstand anything. Yes, sir. A few years ago, as I said, a few years ago, a tornado came through my hometown. Whoop, whoop. Everything. Destroyed. Houses, a, a, a double wide trailers sitting on top of each other, split the town in, in half, right? Mm -hmm. Tore up churches and everything. You know what was left? Foundation. The foundation and the chimney. Yes, sir. So now, we go back and build it. Hmm. Even the nature of the, 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 a tornado could not def destroy the foundation. Yes, sir. See, it, built, it picked up the double wide trailers, right? The underpinning was still there. Hmm. Just look at it. Go look at it. You, you, it's not going to destroy the foundation. So if your foundation is strong in terms of with your family, with any type of relationship that you have, yeah. Regardless, when crisis comes, okay, it something can happen. Hey, think about it, bro. Like even with let's say serendipity, right? We did we did the show. Doom, 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 we did thirty. All right, we about to move forward. Yet for whatever reason, we we took a pause. Right. No questions asked. Nothing. Right. And then you, you know, we come back and say, all right, let's let's pick it back up, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's pick it back up. Right. Because the foundation was the foundation. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. I mean, you know, you you've had tornadoes come through your life. I had tornadoes come through my life. Yeah. But our relationship is built on the foundation that is not wavered. No Can't question. be destroyed. No question. So no question. that's why. When crisis hits, when life be life in, as we say. Life be life in, man. Right? When that happens, if your foundation is, is like genuine, right. if it's strong, if it's what it's supposed to be, then you're, gonna, you're just going to pick up and grow from it. Yeah. If it's not, if the foundation is already fractured. Sand. Then what's going to happen? If it's built on sand, if you didn't pull the concrete right, whatever, then it's right. going to split apart. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. So if you just focus on the foundation and make sure the foundation is is, is strong in terms of your relationship, what is that? Mm. That's vulnerability. That's getting clarity in your communication with folks. Yes, sir. Uh, talk. Right? talk. That's showing people who you are, telling people your truth, talk. hearing people's truth, talk. understanding, being non-judgmental. I can go down the line. Those are the things that builds and pour the concrete correctly of a foundation of relationships, families, business, and organizations. Yes, sir. So no, what, whatever come your way, you good to go. Yes, it doesn't matter. Sir. It doesn't matter. So that to me, that's it. That's the way you you always can mitigate crisis by pouring the concrete the right way the first time. 
Our actions may be impeded, but there can be no impeding on our intentions or disposition because we can accommodate and adapt. The mind adapts to its purposes and obstacles that it faces. Our actions may be impeded, but there can be no impeding on our intentions or disposition. We can accommodate and adapt. So there are people who are who have the gift of my eye, and that gift is called balance justice, right? And there are people who have the gift of uhamasisha. Mm-hmm. And those gifts are basically uh, your ability to inspire. Right. These are the things, your gift, this is the thing you wake up doing, right? It's naturally. Yeah. People who are who are of comma comma Kuhamasishian ilk, like you and I, intentions matter most. Absolutely. Now, we have to allow and give the grace of, for other people, results matter most. Mm. And there always has to be a balance. Right. So I may have the intention of cleaning the kitchen, but if my wife wake up the next morning and it's not clean, it's going to be hell to pay. Yes, sir. Intentions. Or at least if I ain't got it clean by the time she get downstairs. The intentions ain't on me. The, the intentions Man, don't mean dang. nothing. Now, if it's the other way around, yeah, I intend to, I, you know, the communication is I intend to, intend to clean the kitchen by in the morning. I wake up, kitchen not clean. You said to me you had that intention. I'm good. All right. No pressure. Right. No pressure. So I don't want us to get in the trap of intentions means more than actions. Mm-hmm. And the actions supersede intentions. intentions. Right. That's where the communication, that's where the understanding, that's where the clarity, that's yeah. where the love of the relationship that you have with whomever, mm-hmm. and I'm not necessarily talking about just romantic, just whomever, my intentions was to turn in these lesson plans. Yeah. Based off of your history, I know that was your intention because most of the time you turn in these lesson plans. Right. You didn't turn them in this week. You know what? It's all good. Mm. No pressure. My intention is turning these lesson plans for the last five, six, seven, eight weeks and ain't none of them got turned in. We got a problem. You tripping. Your intentions means nothing. Nothing. Nathan. Right? We going to call you Nathan. Nathan. Because you ain't doing nothing. As, as my late boy. great Coach Lee would say, you, you no count nothing. Nothing. Yeah. So we have to take into account that your intentions got to match your actions. Mm-hmm. They got to balance out. I can say all the time, yeah, I intend to do that. I intend to do that. I intend to do that. And you never do it. Right. So now it's... it's, it's, it's uh, it's like um, blowing smoke. Yeah, it's like blowing smoke. But what it does, it it, it diminishes your character. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Right. Yeah. But also on the other end, if you say I intended to do it and you didn't, given your history, oh okay, you get the benefit of the doubt. Right. I got to be. I got to be able to assume the positive. Right. Yeah. That's important. You know, um, Oak, when um, when I attack problems, when I attack life, when I attack situations, I often think in terms of just my framework and how I think. I don't think in terms of, all right, I got to get through it. Right, I got to overcome it. Mm-hmm. I got to beat it. Mm-hmm. My first train of thought in my framework is, who do I need to be in this moment to conquer what I'm up against? It's not problem, challenge, situation. I want to overcome. And I always think, who do I need to become in this moment? Right? What type of knowledge do I need to acquire? What type of books do I need to read? Right? Do I need to be in better shape? Like, who do I need to become in this moment? If my daughter got cheer, if my son got basketball, if my wife is dealing with something with a grandmother, Who do I need to become in this moment to be the most efficient and effective 
man, leader, husband, father in my household. That's my framework. When you go through things, when you encounter things, what's your framework and how do you think just about what you're up against and trying to get on the other side of it or dissecting it? Um, that is the way, but again, we're going back to being a Kuhamasitian, being an inspirationalist. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Let them know what Kuhamasitian is. It is, so they can it is ones whose gift is to inspire. There it is. Right. Y'all know. Your gift is, the Kuham Sitch is one whose gift is inspiration. It comes out in many forms, whether it's coaching, teaching, speaking, um, just, it, it just exudes you. It's just who you are, right? And what you were saying, you you offer the mindset of a Kuham which right. is whatever the moment calls for, that's what I'm seeking to become. Bruce Lee, become water. Right. If I need to become water, boom. And when, and your journey is, you figure out, okay, I'm not able to become water. So that's my focus. Mm. Let me figure out how to become water. I'm not trying to figure out how to solve your problem. Yeah. I'm not trying to figure out um, what the issue is. I'm trying, my, my job, I was sent to earth to figure out how to become water. And then get the understanding of when to become water. Mm. Yeah. Or how to become the brick wall and when to become the brick wall. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is that I need to be in this moment, I want to have enough tools in my tool belt to become that. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. So for the first auto business is figure out, you got to figure out and do enough self uh, self-retrospection to, to figure out exactly what your gift is. Mm. And however you go about doing it, who you need to talk to, what did you need to read, whatever, whatever. But once you figure out what your gift is, then that kind of sets your, that becomes your compass for mm. how you move through the world. Yeah. You got some people whose gift is aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Like the folks who can sing, who can dance, who can like, Michael Jackson's gift he just can walk on stage and just stand there for five minutes and folks just start falling out. Mm. That's that's you got to give them aesthetics. Have you have you ever seen that clip when that lady was talking about Michael Jackson as a teenager, and she was reading some of the things he wrote in his journal? You ever saw that? Mm -hmm. When he changed, uh, he wrote in his journal. They was coming back from somewhere on tour, and he was just writing in his journal about how he was about to go to the next level how he was going to train in a way that he's never trained before. He was going to become the greatest entertainer, how, what people would call him, how he would approach, like, his stuff with his brothers. Like, it was phenomenal, man. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I was interested. You, know, you mentioned MJ. Yeah, Go you got, you know, like, Stevie, Prince. Like, you you know, like, uh, 3,000. You got some people who, you know that's their gift. Yeah. Not just that they're good at it. That's just what they sent here to do. 3,000, Andre Three Stacks, by the way. Oh, yeah. You listen to his uh, flute album? Uh, I listen to some of it, but I listen to John, uh, The Flautist, John Williams, The Flautist. Yeah, um, yeah, he dope. And uh, we had a conversation, though, mentioning just transforming a little bit and how wonderful it is with 3,000, what he's doing. Right. Because Andre 3,000 Outcast, just so the people know what we're talking about. Okay. Um, we, I talked to... Uh, John, and I was like, this is so transformative. Yeah. Because he's, because of his platform, being Andre 3000, mm -hmm. Outcast, blah, 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 right? People are going to gravitate now. They're like, oh, the flute. Right. Oh, okay. We put it on the consciousness of folks. Now they're going to go and research and see who, el who else plays the flute, especially in the hip hop world and all of that. We're like, Bro, you about to be put on. He just opened the door. Mm -hmm. But, you know, John been doing this forever. Yeah. And and has, you know, he's a master at it. Yeah. And a lot of times, you may not have to be the one. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not the one. You the one. Mm -hmm. I would just like to think that I opened the possibility of doors of education and, and that it's cool to be smart. Right. 
Definitely. And now you've taken it and ran with it. Yeah. You know? Definitely. That's that's uh that was the beauty of that's that to me, that's the beauty of Andre 3000 with the flute. He's opening the doors for the cats who really been putting in this work for years and years. Oh, we turn our attention now to cats who play the flute. John Williams, the flautist. John Dope. I saw John in the airport. Uh, yeah, one day I came yeah. back in town. He was in the airport in the food court just playing, right? And people were standing around. And of course, when we saw each other, you recognized. I dapped him up because I didn't want to break his set. But it was it was phenomenal, man. And I thought to myself, like, like he is a guy that loves what he does so much that he's not getting paid to be here. Like, he just loves the art of what he's doing. You think about three stacks. The, the most phenomenal thing about what he's doing in his journey to me, um, and you got people that critique the album, you got people that love it. Like, I'm an Andre 3K guy, right? But the most phenomenal thing about it is he respects what he does so much that when he's not in the space to do it, he's not going to force something for money. Yeah. Like, I think that speaks more to his character above anything. Because you got cats that's just putting out stuff, putting it, you'll listen to a track, cat sound like he crying the whole time. <laughs> Run up on the land now, hey, now, came around, huh? And cats, I'm talking about, and cats will buy it. Yeah. But you got one of the greatest artists in the history of art. Of art. That's saying, no, nah, Doc, I ain't in that space yet. So I ain't going to do it. If, if he puts out an album, to, and the crazy thing about it, he outsold most hip-hop artists with a flute album. Yeah. And didn't rap on it. And you got Cash Rap, he outsold most of them, right? But he respects what he does so much that he's like, oh, nah, man, I can't do it. A cat asked me a week and a half ago, hey, ain't you coach? And I was like, nah, I'm going to just be real with you right now, bro. I ain't coaching. That time going to my children. Mm -hmm. right? that, that extra time. Right? Like the time in general going to my family, yeah. but that extra time that's going to my daughter and my son and my three little sisters. Yeah. Now, one could say, I could very easily be like, oh, no question. I coach. Yeah, I'll jump on the car with you for whatever price. Cats do that. Mm. Cats do that. No pressure. Do what you do. I but it. I respect what I do so much that if you hit me up about some information, some, I ain't tripping. Yeah, bro. That's how I got to it. That's how I did it. I ain't tripped. I respect what I do so much that I ain't never going to put myself in a situation to where it's just about money. I'm going to put you on a retainer with your credit card to give you information that I acquired from experience just so I can look like I got some type of business model. Nah, man. I respect what I do, man. I, I'm glad you, you said that, that part of it. That gave me a different perspective on it because... I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, whatever, I make do. Yeah. I make do. But I think I'm, I'm broke and I'm rich at the, at the same time. That is. That is. I you know what I'm saying? saying? Because the, the level of, of uh, enjoyment, freedom, mm. um, excitement, invigoration I get from doing this. No question. You know what I'm saying? Or just having conversations with different people. Or, or even those those real legitimate interactions mm -hmm. with teachers. Yeah, you can't beat that with a stick, man. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um, I just so happen to, you know, I get paid to do a job. Right. That's cool, but that's not that's not my that's not the, the work that I bring to the table. Mm. So the, yes, you see what I'm saying? There's no not question. there's not a amount of money that anybody could pay you for the work or the worth that you bring Absolutely. to the table. Absolutely. See, changing lives, influencing lives, enhancing yeah. lives, mm. saving lives, whatever you want to call it, you can't put a monetary value I on it. That keep on giving, doc. That gift keep on giving, doc. You can't price that out. That nah. gift keep on nah. giving. Nah. I love it, though. I love it, though. Like when you said I'm broke and rich at the same time. It's like when I hear somebody speak and talk, regardless of where you come from, regardless of situation, circumstance, um, 
I don't want to say I dislike because that's not the word. But when an individual says, I come from nothing, and I'm like, nah, doc, you don't come from nothing. Nah. Like, your grandma's son. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Steve. You about your to overcook my grits, ain't you? about to overcook my grits right? again. Your lineage something. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. you don't come from nothing. Like, yeah. somebody in that lineage something that came before you in order for you to get to the space and right. place that you are. Like, it's just like when a cat, I could never compare where I am, what I've done, what I've made to my parents, to my grandparents. I could never say, oh, man, I make more money than my mama. My, man, my mama had dreams and aspirations to become a nurse, man. She had me at 16. Okay, so what? Situation happened. Had me at 16. Her mother told her, go pursue your dreams, right? Go be what you want to be. My mom, nah, cool. I'm going to stay here and I'm going to raise my son, right? Did what she had to do. If I get in a situation in life where I'm going to say, oh, man, I'll make more than my mom. How dare? Right? The sacrifice was different. The situation and circumstance was different, right? And so when I look at those things, oh, it's a certain level of gratitude and respect and appreciation that I have for the people that traveled a journey prior to me, for me to be in a position that I now am in, and for me to see life the way that I see it and be able to experience the things that I now experience. Mm -hmm. I'm cognizant that it was intentional sacrifices made. Oftentimes we talk about sacrifice, that's cool. It was intentional sacrifices made. Like, nah, doc, I'm gonna put this dream on hold so I can raise this little snotty nose joke. Yeah. Intentional sacrifices made. Pop, nah, man, I'm going to drive across town. I'm going to take you here so you get this train. Intentional sacrifices made. Not sacrifices that was brought about because of conditions, situations, and circumstances. So how dare I get to a certain situation and circumstance in my life? I'm riding on my thoroughbred horse, and I'm looking down saying, oh, nah, I got more. I made more money than anybody in my Man, come on, man. Yeah, I'm chopping you in your throat if I ever. Come on, man. If I ever hear you say that. I'm chopping you square in your throat on sight. Come on, man. I you know how hard my mama hit me in my chest? Yeah, yeah. Cause, come on, man. See, that, that's that's what I mean by teaching the lessons, man. <laughs> my dad was uh, making good money, real good money, driving trucks across the country. And he stopped driving trucks when I got, you know, when, when his wife, my mom, got impregnated with me, so uh -huh. he could be there every day. Respect. Respect. So, you know, I understand. I, I literally understand what you're saying. So there is not nothing on earth that going to get me mm. to be or to think any less than of the folks that came before me because they're, they, and that's just a sacrifice that I know about. Absolutely. Absolutely. See, I don't know the sacrifice that my great-grandmother made mm. or that my great-grandfather made. That lineage, bro. You know what I'm saying? I don't know the, the kind of, uh, like, he just had to chill out and be quiet when he was being uh, degraded mm. down the street by such and such and such and Mr. Charlie or whomever. Because if he opened his mouth, he'd been hanging from a tree somewhere, then I wouldn't be here. Mm. So we we have to understand that the folk where you come you come from greatness, even if it doesn't look like that, even if it doesn't seem like that from the world. These folk, the fact that you're here means that you come from greatness, especially the folks that look like us and what mm. they had to endure mm. just to stay alive. My grandma would tell me about times when the police coming through the front door and she having their boys jump out the back door to go down through the woods. Mm. 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 And if that didn't happen, then I wouldn't be here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, you know, we, we have this real negative narrative about yes, uh, our, our past and our folks. But perspective, what you say, the thing about perspective drive performance? Yes, sir. Change the perspective of your folks. Mm. Your folks were some wonderful people, mm. flawed, mm. yet wonderful. Mm. That's the balance of it. We're not trying, we're not putting nobody on no pedestal. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Jesus said, thou who is without sin, cast, cast the, first the first stone. stone. 
Yes, Jesus sir. didn't throw the stone either. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit right there. Mm. Mm. Yes, sir. Qualified. So Qualified. you come from greatness. You come from excellence. Qualified. You don't come from perspective. You don't come from perfection. Mm. But you do come from excellence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I sit there, Doc. Picking that up. He dropped that. We're gonna end it with this word though. Um, I want to end it with the word failure. One of the greatest gifts that God can give you. Mm -hmm. Because it is the most, one of the most powerful teaching tools. One of the most powerful things that can happen to propel you to your greatness. Yes, sir. To your destiny. Yes, sir. For you to walk in your gift. I failed at marriage. Freaking failed at it. I failed as a head football coach at Forest Park. Failed at it. Yeah. And to the, me and you had a conversation the other day. All these cats that's coaching in the NFL, y'all gonna have to come see me if you think you can outcoach me. Yeah. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Talk about it. No, I, well, about I'm just it. saying, like, if, if... Stand on it. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm standing on business. Standing on business, like the young folks. Yeah, say. I'm standing on that business. You're going to have to come see me if you think you can out coach me. Yes, if sir. If I got the same opportunity you got to sit around every day, mm -hmm. and all I got to do is think about football, you had to come see me. Mm. Right? Cold but it's because I, because I failed. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, I, sir. I failed at being a principal at a school. Yeah. You ain't going to be no better administrator than me. You ain't going to be no better school uh, leadership than me. Mm. Mm. Because I failed at it. Mm. Yes, sir. Yeah. I've, I, I, I would say, and I, I'm not going to say that I failed at being because I'm still in the process of, and will always be in the process of being uh, a father. Yet, I've certainly made my mistakes. Yes, sir. Right? And that's, you know, failure, you're making the mistakes. Mm -hmm. If I didn't make the mistakes, I wouldn't be as good as I am at it. Mm. Mm. Yes, sir. That's that like failure is is a is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Yeah. To be able to experience your best self. Yes, sir. Definitely, man. Definitely. Secret weapon. Embrace it. Um I would even venture to say, when you do things, when you pursue things, like Ray Lewis used to say, man, I'm training for failure. Yeah. Like, I'm training for failure. Not training to be strong, I'm training for failure, right? And reset and recalibrate, I'm training for it, right? That's a different mentality, that's a different spirit, that's a different pursuit. But I will say this, when you encounter failure, um, like we talk about with words and like we talk about with language, step back, reassess, and understand that at the beginning of this, we talked about unbecoming, mm -hmm. right? Like put a pin in it, bro. It's just a stage, it's just a phase of unbecoming to where you assess, recalibrate, and you use it to propel you forward. It's not the end. It's like when you tell a cat, don't put a period where God puts a comma. When you put a period, that means that it's over. When you put a comma, pause, there's more to come. When you encounter failure, you pause in. There's more to come, man. When you encounter failure, you pause in. There's more to come. Yeah. Keep pressing, keep pushing, keep living. Peace. Peace.